Also in that game, at some point, there was a bit of a fight in the end zone, or so it seemed. Um, you know, you personally are used to avoiding tacklers and juking them out and trying to, you know, not get hit. And then there you are laying out Mr. Alexander. <laughs> well, what was that like? Uh, it was something that I uh, had in mind and watching film uh, leading up to that week. Um, you know, it was something that I was, you know, pondering and thinking about. And, uh, you know, they had recently had put in the rules where the returner can defend himself the way some guys running down the field. And, uh, you know, all year I was, you know, right there, uh, close to doing it, but never got it done. And, uh, you know, that, and like I said, too, watching film, I had, you know, coming to that game the year before, or previous years, they did a lot of kicking away and not trying to give me the ball. So, you know, they had taken amongst themselves all that game to keep, keep, keep the ball away from me. So at that time, you know, I, I threw an opportunity to get a shot in and kind of take my frustration out on it. And, uh, you know, that's all that was pretty much. Well, after that game, there you are, undefeated. But something else came up that I've always wondered about. Throughout your career, you were 4-0 against Tennessee. You lost once to Georgia, but 3-1 and against Georgia. Beat Miami. 4-0 against Florida State. So there seems to be some kind of, uh, you know, vendetta out against your rivals. How does Urban handle rivals differently? Uh, you know, it's definitely, you know, in leading to those weeks, does a good job with me. Like I said, the bullets are talking, getting us prepared. But uh, with the rivalry, man, it's something so where you, you get prepared for them all something. Uh, each rivalry has its own, you know, uh, period of the summer that, you know, when we take time to talk about them and, and you know, we educate, our coach gives us out to educate us on the history of rivalry and, you know, the, uh, who's up in the rivalry and things like that. So, uh, you know, I can definitely say what a little more life is better than rivalry, but, uh, we, 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 we take each opponent seriously, so, you know, it's not something we're looking over just, uh, uh, um, well, the ending of that season wasn't how any of us wanted it to be. Um, in particular, your ending was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, can you describe it? Uh, no, I can't really describe it. You know, it's something that still tough to me to, to this day. We don't want to talk about. Uh, you know, it's very unfortunate. You know, it's something that I had dealt with my junior year. Well, after making the decision to return my senior year, uh, it's something I had dealt with and being injured and. Uh, and I'm a guy that prides himself on, you know, not being injured and being able to play. So having to get injured in that game and uh, feeling like, you know, I can't do anything to help the team. And feeling like, you know, if I would have played, you know, I could have left a mark and, you know, maybe turn the tide a little bit. Uh, it was very tough to deal with. And like I said, I definitely, it's something that, you know, I try to stay with and then don't like to really shit in a lot of light on. Okay. Well, I mean, the team's loss itself was extremely heartbreaking. Um, what what did Coach Meyer say to you guys in the post game locker room? I you know, don't really remember. Uh, it was like I said, I had so many emotions going through my head for the injury and us losing and not being able to you know finish the way we wanted to finish and do uh, things when we had planned. Uh, and, you know, it's something to where you know at that moment you're not really listening. Uh, to be honest, you know it's something where it's tough to deal with, man. And, you know, everything I was going through with the injury, man, it was, it was tough to me for me for a moment just to listen to anybody, what anybody had to say, because I had so many different emotions going through my head and, for, you know, so much uncertainty and things like that. And everything you went to, uh, I feel like it's been taken away from me. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was frustrating and, um, you know, difficult to accept. But, I mean, throughout your career, all you guys did was win. I mean, I'm talking your entire senior class. You know, you, Spikes, Tebow for three years, Percy Harvin, you know, Dustin Doe, Riley Cooper, David Nelson, guys like that. All they're used to was just winning, 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 winning. And, you know, at the time, you guys were the best senior class in the history of the SEC. And, I mean, since you're in the SEC, you know, you kind of got to – think that you know you were the best ever since you were playing SEC schedules four years where do you rank your senior class in the, the history of college football uh, it's kind of hard to compare just because you know in the different areas you can't really say who you're better than or who's better but uh you know, I think that we have the right up there would be uh you know we got Alabama class that came after us and you know uh with uh you know the Reggie Bush uh you know USC days 
I think with those three classes probably, uh, you know, definitely left their mark uh, among college football. You definitely have to put those three classes in the conversation if you're ever going to have that conversation and if you're ever going to talk about, you know, some of the better classes and some of the better uh, teams that are just like well, we've talked a little bit about the departure of Dan Mullen, um, leaving for Mississippi State. Steve Adazio coming in to take over as the offensive coordinator. Um, it, above all else, what do you think caused the drop off against Alabama in the SEC championship game in two thousand nine? Like I said, you know, you can't really pinpoint one thing, but I know throughout the whole season, it was just something of putting the new offensive coordinator. You know, trying to get it tested for him on the fly in one year after dealing with, uh, you know, Coach Mullen for three years in a row. You know, it's tough. It's tough for a unit. You know, like I said, you're getting different things. I remember uh, Coach Nagel was a big run guy. You know, uh, you know, Coach Mullen did a good job of mixing it up and always, you know, run past, you know, kind of, uh, you know, he's in and out 50-50. And uh, like I said, you know, you can't really say, you know, pinpoint it pinpointed on one thing because you just didn't win but you been with the better team that night. But uh, you know, I can definitely say throughout that whole year that it's definitely an adjustment for our team and everyone that we need is just uh, uh, getting in the office for this. Well, after the Alabama game, you guys got one more shot to end your careers the right way. The Sugar Bowl against Cincinnati, and it wasn't even a contest. You guys just blew them out right from the get-go. How sweet did it feel for you, even though you didn't play, to get a win in your final college football game? That was big. You know, uh, I was actually not even, I didn't even attend the game. Uh, so I remember watching it on TV and just excited for the guys. Because, uh, you know, we finished out strong. You know, we are still in the BCF game. So it wasn't something to, uh, you know, we had previous teams before, like the Georgia and uh, Alabama get to those games and you feel like, you know, they didn't take it. Seriously, you see the level of play they stepped out on the field with because they weren't in the national title game and where they thought they were, uh, what they thought they should be. But the CI guys just come out and still play, still execute, and just try to, you know, uh, oppose their will on the team early. Uh, it was big. It was real big. And, uh, you know, I was happy for everyone. And I definitely, you know, was glad that we showed we're with the far superior team. What will you remember most about your time in Florida? What comes to mind as you walked away from the field? Just, you know, you, you're leaving a brotherhood that can never be broken or, or can never be, you know, it can never come again because it's something where now all these guys are going to go these different directions and, uh, you know, you're not going to see each other every day like you used to. And I, and I tell people all the time, man, that was probably, that's something you can't take back, man. You have, uh, you know, all these different great athletes on one team and you're in one meeting room and, you know, one week room together. So you're seeing all these different personalities, man. It, it's big, man. And, uh, like I said, that's probably the biggest thing, just knowing that you're not going to be able to see these guys each day and, uh, you know, be around them every day. And, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest uh, memory.